What's up guys, it's Johnny Candido of Candido Training HQ. Today's video is going to be all about grip strength for powerlifting. Now, the goal with this video is to make it the one video that you can link to anyone who does have grip issues in the deadlift. And so I'm gonna cover every, every really facet of this topic and link to sources when I personally don't have the answer on certain specific points. But this is the hub that you can get to. So first of all, for some background on myself, I had grip issues in the low 600s on the conventional deadlift, and I've had grip issues in the upper 600s on the sumo deadlift. I've been able to fix both of those issues, so I've tried basically everything. I don't have particularly big hands, so this is not an area where I'm just genetically gifted in. This is something I had to solve, and now I'm at the point where I pulled 700 with absolutely no issues. Now, I'll cover that deadlift in a future video because I haven't actually showed it yet, but it's not even close to being an issue now with grip. So I would, I would like to assume that I'm not gonna have issues moving forward at all. Now, with that being said, I break this down into three categories. There's three basic approaches here. The first one is just gripping the bar so that you have enough tension at the base of your fingers but you're not gripping it so deeply in your palm that then you're just sacrificing leverage to an extreme extent. However, the important point here is for most people, you're still gripping in a way that you are creating some tension, you're developing calluses, and this is not actually ideal when it comes to leverage. Uh, when it comes to the hook grip, that's the second option, and that does provide better leverage. So what I'll do is I'll link a video by Kayla Woolen who is arguably the best deadlifter on the planet. He pulls hook grip, and what I like about his video the most is that he also shows someone with smaller hands pulling hook grip. That's incredibly important because, like I said, some people are just genetically gifted, and then those tips aren't actually gonna translate to you, the viewer. So I recommend his video. I've pulled 650 pounds hook grip, but I don't use it in competitions because it is just a more sensitive style of pulling if you are someone who it doesn't come as naturally to. So again, I'm not gonna say that this is the best way to do it, it's just another option. Lastly is the fingertip grip. Now this kind of combines both worlds and I'm gonna uh, link a video by David Wilson, who is also another phenomenal deadlifter, pulls 800 pounds on a stiff bar and he's really an expert at this style because he pulls with the bar very low. So he's really pulling to a point where I believe, now I haven't actually talked to him personally on this, I believe the calluses would mostly form on the fingers themselves. The benefit is that it provides great leverage, very similar to the hook grip, but again, not everyone can do this. I've tried this and it flat out does not work for me. I'm not as strong in it. I will always be limited by my grip strength. So I actually do grip fairly deep in the hand. A lot of people have smaller hands or just moderate size hands. They have to create some twisting tension deliberately, and they know that maybe it'll even slide around a little bit in the hands, but it will still come up, and you'll still be able to hold on to it to lock out. Ironically, the style that is the most common is typically the least recommended on YouTube. I think that's partially because hook grip is more fashionable. To talk about advantages of leverage and of symmetry is more appealing to people than talking about consistency and realistically what you can replicate in high pressure situations. But those factors matter far more. I would rather accept a slight disadvantage if it meant I can pull my third attempt and actually hit it every single meet with no technical issues. So that's why for most people, I do recommend the first way. So there's a lot of people who come up to me and say they have grip issues on the deadlift and they flat out don't use chalk. You would be absolutely shocked at the number of people who have asked me that. And in situations like this, you have to know that the standard of deadlifting without straps is relatively arbitrary. It's based on powerlifting and all powerlifters have access to chalk. And on, on meet day, they have access to a bar with better knurling than almost any commercial gym bar. So that's incredibly important to know because if you are training without those uh, pieces of equipment, then for no reason you're limiting your posterior chain strength. If you cannot pull with chalk, you should train with straps. There's no question about it. On top of that, if you are training with chalk and you don't have the access to a powerlifting bar, then you still could have no grip issues potentially. 
So until you compete in a meet, you really can't tell for sure. This is a 20 kilo bar with the black zinc coating. And you can see how much that bites. So that's something that not a lot of people outside of the sport realize just how big of a difference that makes. The Ohio Power Bar has a significantly different feel based on the coating. The Cerakote is way less aggressive. You can even literally see that the knurling is not as sharp as the black zinc. And then the bare steel is the sharpest because there's simply no coating. On the website, they claim all of them have an aggressive knurling and they do have the same pattern, but the coating affects the valleys of the knurling. Lastly, for a very pragmatic tip that should help a lot of people, is ask for the bar to be wiped down before your first and second deadlift attempts at every single meet. They only automatically do it before your third attempt to deadlift. It took until my 15th meet to realize how big of a difference this makes. I don't care how strong your deadlift is either. You paid money for this meet, and this is an accommodation they have to make by the rules. So be assertive and don't feel like you need to be at a certain strength level to demand this. For this entire segment, what I'm going to do is link to Mike Tashir. He is a world-renowned coach, and what he recommends is doing long holds for three sets of 30 seconds for volume work, and then also doing every working set with a five-second hold on the last rep. Try this way first. Follow exactly what Mike Tashir says. If it works, done. You're flat out. You solved the problem. If it needs to be a little bit more nuanced than that, then move on to my more complicated approach. And it, by when I say it's more complicated, I don't mean that as a compliment to it. It's complicated because nothing else that I've done works. So to get to my approach specifically, here's what I do that's unique is first of all, I do all of my rep work with straps, all of it. So if I'm doing a three by nine with 525 pounds, I am warming up without straps. I hit one single with 525 and the rest is all with straps. Now this is something that you see hook grip deadlifters do sometimes because there is a finer line when you can tear your skin and people understand that it's painful. But I approach that same caution with mixed grip and I actually find that it does help preserve the hands and that frequency is more important than volume. But a key point here is that I always warm up without straps. So I basically universally would recommend that because if you start warming up with straps, now you're going to get on the end of things where you just cannot redeem it because you're starting to get used to the pattern where you can exert force um, a lot more harshly. You can go zero to 100 without pulling the tension out the bar the same way. And you can get better leverage, particularly on a sumo deadlift with straps. So you have to acknowledge that there can be an objective advantage to using straps. However, if you always warming up to at least one single without straps, you're able to retain that pattern and you're able to feel the difference. So if there is a difference, sometimes that's fine. My four rep max with straps is higher than what I could ever do without straps. I know that, but as long as I'm able to retain the skill, then I can feel out that difference and I can understand, okay, if it's always plus 10 pounds, that's fine. And then on meet day, I can perform with no issues. But the final point that I do that is the most unique is to use an Olympic weightlifting bar to contrast against a powerlifting bar. And the Olympic weightlifting bar is for higher frequency grip work. So what I do is I pick between one of two things, is I either do reverse wrist curls, um, and that's usually farther out from a meet because it both conditions the hand skin, but of course it also conditions the forearms, just in case you actually need that muscularly uh, to develop. But also just using alternate grip holds is what I would do on a meat cycle. And that's the most reliable thing to focus on, especially since, like I said, you're not actually getting that much uh, rep work in my setup with um, an alternate grip. And even the mobility of just getting used to the supination on your underhand is important because after a while it can actually feel very awkward. So what I do is I use that, like I said, with the Olympic weightlifting bar because it's both thinner and has a softer knurling. And if you do that for three to five times a week, every, like let's say everyone's on at least an upper lower split where you're in the gym four days a week, just do it every time you go in the gym. After you deadlift, do it. And then on days where you don't deadlift, do it. And now you're constantly getting this work where it's in between. It's not as soft as something like a fat grip where it's made of rubber. Or, it, or just any other implement where you're just squeezing and you're just focusing on forms. You are conditioning your hand skin at a high frequency with a moderate stimulus, low to moderate stimulus. 
so that you're never getting beyond that point where you're cutting up your hands. So those are some points to just keep in mind. And it's even gotten to a point where I will use a women's weightlifting bar on purpose to find that middle ground. So it's incredibly important in this situation that you don't have a macho approach because this is a unique scenario where if you overtrain your hand skin, let's imagine it's a muscle itself. If you overtrain it in this case, then how much does your performance decrease? Maybe 10 whole percent. If you have a torn callus, it might affect your strength 10% without straps. It would be like if you had one set too many on the bench press and all of a sudden you lose 10% of your strength. Obviously, in reality, you lose maybe 1% or less and then you just adjust and that's it, you're fine. In this case, there is a greater cost to that, greater cost to overtraining than there is to undertraining. And that's why having these small, high frequent doses is far better because then you're able to constantly evaluate this and make sure that you didn't overdo it. Because the moment you overdo it, then you have to wait a few weeks it's really, it just piles on and the situation just gets worse. So like I said, high frequency, low volume per session initially, and then you adjust from there. And when I do those holds with the Olympic weightlifting bar, it's typically 15 to 30 seconds. And usually I do something like two to three sets with the 15 seconds, maybe two sets of 30 seconds, and then add weight. Just something that simple. All right, that's it guys. That covers everything from the regular grip that I do, and I do recommend most people do, the fingertip grip link in the description, hook grip link in the description, and then all those different factors as far as bars and most importantly, hand skin condition. I cannot emphasize enough just how important that is, whether you actually hit a deadlift or not. A lot of times it's not your grip strength itself. That's it. Make sure to like the video, support the channel, subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, who comes short again and again. Er